name is Joe Korn. Uh, I've been a member of WISE for about eight years. Uh, my wife actually joined WISE uh, three years before I retired. I retired in 2010, and she would always come home and tell me about all the wonderful things that she uh, learned and got involved with with WISE. And so as soon as I uh, retired, I became a member as well and started taking uh, a lot of the wonderful courses. And as I hope you'll see, uh, we're more than just the courses. We have special events and trips and a lot of other activities. But the core of uh, WISE is the uh, courses we present. Uh, so uh, we're essentially uh, almost all volunteer organization. Uh, and so we have lots of people who uh, serve WISE in a lot of different ways. So we'll see some of the committees that we have that keeps us coming along. Uh, I served originally on the curriculum committee that helps put together the courses that we present and eventually got involved with the administrative side of it and was uh, vice president and then president uh, for the last two years. My uh, term, we do two year terms, so my term gets expired this past June and now Marcia Addis is the president. But I served for two years and uh, saw the organization grow quite a bit. And as I was explaining to someone just recently, um, for a long time, we grew uh, by word of mouth. Uh, we weren't well known outside of the greater Worcester community, but uh, people would hear about us through friends and relatives. And uh, we felt we could really get the word of WISE out to the community much better if we had a committee specifically doing outreach. And so during my term as president, I created an outreach committee, and we've been doing a lot more of that. And uh, your uh, participation here is, is a sign of, of some of the work that we've been doing to try to get the word of WISE out there. And hopefully you'll see that we really have a wonderful organization. And uh, if you if you like, uh, we would love to welcome you as, as future members of, of WISE. Carol? Yes, uh, I'm Carol Fowerback. Uh, I'm part of that outreach program that Joe uh, mentioned. And I've been a WISE member for, I believe, four years and have been taking classes and have gotten involved because, as Joe said, it is a volunteer organization and um, I felt that I wanted to do my share to further the program. So today we have this presentation for you and hopefully you'll get information from it that you might feel that you'd like to be part of WISE as well. Um, and certainly if you have any questions, do ask, raise your hand holler out, whatever, yeah. but we'd be glad to ask, answer any questions that you have. Okay. Yep, yeah, jump in any time. Uh, let me just go around the room real quickly, introduce yourselves, and uh, you know what your background is and how you got interested in perhaps uh, learning about WISE. I'm Denise Nephew, and uh, since I retired, I've been doing courses at Worcester State and now through Alpha. But I've seen this newspaper articles about it, but you know, but not enough to like pursue it. So I'm glad to have an opportunity to learn more. Good. Jim Ross, I did too. Worcester State too. So this is something new to try. Mm -hmm. what's, what's Alpha? I'm Carol, I met the two of you uh, oh, early crazy. on. Um, I learned about WISE when I worked at Assumption College, but I was always too busy to get involved and I thought, well, maybe when I retire. So I have since retired and I'm, I'm pretty involved in a lot of things, but I think I want to really explore what WISE has to offer and there's a good possibility I would join. Sounds like a good program. Thank you. Okay. Hello, uh, my name is Dave Sweetman. Um, I actually was in the first WISE session, oh. <clears throat> but um, I started going back to work and I just finished up working this last uh, March. <clears throat> and so I thought I'd look into it again. Good, good. I think we were doing Lear. Oh, okay. Well, I'll try to answer all of your questions about what okay. WISE is and what we do. And again, if you have any questions, I'll jump in any time and uh, try to address them. So we're the Worcester Institute for Senior Education. We're a member of the Lifelong Learning Institute, of which there are numerous chapters throughout Massachusetts and throughout the country. 
and so we're affiliated with them as well. And we're a member-directed organization for providing lifelong learning opportunities. Uh, we have only two paid staff, uh, a director, and uh, who is also our liaison with Assumption College that we work with, and they are our sponsors. And we have a uh, paid staff that operates our office. And other than that, we're totally a volunteer-run organization. Uh, we were founded 26 years ago. We just actually had our 25th anniversary last year. In fact, when I became the president uh, a few years ago, uh, I think the first thing somebody came up and said to me is, now you do realize our 25th anniversary celebration is going to be on your watch. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great. <laughs> so, but we had a very fun time, uh, did some special things for our 25th, and uh, actually had a, a celebration over watch. It was a country club just down the road, and among other things. So uh, we just got through our 25th year. Uh, we started with uh, seven original founders and 146 registered members, and we're now over 450. In fact, we've been having meetings on uh, how we address WISE as we get bigger and bigger. Uh, some of the things that we've done in the past, we're gonna have to change a little bit in terms of the administrative load, having the larger organization, and um, uh, uh, offering more courses, which we're adding to all the time. So we're offering each semester more and more courses. Uh, we have uh, two types of membership. We have full year and half year. Full year dues are $250 a year, and that allows you to take as many courses as you want. And half year dues are $150, and I'll show you where uh, what, what a half year buys you. Uh, so basically we have four semesters a year, A and B in the fall. We start right after Labor Day. Uh, we run for five weeks. Uh, usually the, court, the semester stretches a little longer because we might have a week or two off for holidays such as Thanksgiving or uh, Easter and those kind of things. Uh, but generally most of our courses run uh, for five sessions. Uh, 90 minutes a session, and uh, B session usually ends around the end of November, right after Thanksgiving or early December. And then we have a break, which we're in right now, and then we start up again for our uh, winter and spring session. We start the first week in February for five weeks. We have about a week or so break between C and D. We usually allow a little bit of a buffer, particularly because uh, weather cancellations are not unusual in C session. But then we'll start up in D and we'll go through early May. So these are not assumption courses? No. No. We, so we run our own calendar. We typically will be closed when Assumption College is closed and so forth, but we basically run five-week sessions four times a year. And I'm in the process right now of setting up a summer program, which we've never done before. We have done summer pro a course or two in a summer in the past. But right now, we're, there's been a lot of interest among our membership of doing courses through the summer. So now I'm actually coordinating that effort. And uh, we're going to have a summer program in 2019, probably running through June and July. So that's another, I, didn't, I don't talk about it here, but that's going to be in place as well. Would that be part of the half year membership or the full year? Well, they, they will probably, we're still getting the uh, organization together on how we're going to do it. I suspect, unlike what we do during the academic year, where your membership allows you to basically attend as many courses as you want, and that's one of the real benefits. And uh, we typically do 20 courses or so a term. Uh, we've actually been adding more courses as we've grown, so we're actually doing 22 courses in this session this year. But um, once you're a member, you can sign up for as many courses as you want. If you do the math, most people take an average of three or four courses a session. So that's like 16 courses a year. If you divide 16 into 250, you can see courses are really inexpensive. You know, you're paying $15, $20 to attend a course. Where if you sign up for a course over at um, one of the local colleges or the art museum or something, you might pay several hundred dollars to attend a course. So. Um, 
one course there would be almost a full year of membership at Wise. So, so are these day, night? I'm sorry? Are these daytime, nighttime? Almost all the courses are during the day. Uh, being uh, a senior organization, uh, a lot of seniors don't like to drive at night, and uh, so we uh, hold our courses during the day. We've actually been adding a few courses in the late afternoon, uh, particularly in the uh, in the fall and the spring where uh, you get a little more daylight and people don't have to be driving home at night. So you're, it's at Assumption, right, still? Most of the college, most are at Assumption. So I will what about parking, show you the venues. Parking stinks at Assumption. But, um, I, I've, I've been to many different college campuses around the country. I've never found one where people say we have good parking. <laughs> right, so, but what I'm saying uh, is, so do we have to get involved with getting a parking sticker from Assumption? Yes, we, we, they do. It's, only, it's $15 a year, and you get a parking sticker. It's good for the whole year. And they have different areas designated with different colors. And what you get is a red parking sticker, which is the same as a staff sticker. And there are more red parking areas than anything else on campus. So that's a, a benefit. They also have black and green and some other colors. But uh, is parking easy? I would not say so, necessarily. Uh, people do complain about the parking. As I said, I've never found a place where, a college where people don't complain about the parking. Is there a South? They do have a large, they have a do large, large garage on campus. Right. They can almost always find parking. From where our courses are, it's a little bit of a walk across campus to the classroom, but it's a small campus, so it's not a huge area, yeah. distance. Do they have a satellite parking area and a shuttle bus? They, you know, we've talked about trying to get a satellite shuttle, but right now they don't have it uh, on campus. Uh, there is handicap parking, and uh, you know, being uh, having a lot of seniors in Wise, uh, a number of them are handicapped, and so they can take advantage of the handicapped spaces. The parking lot, the big one, is by the gym. Where, where the no, no, it's down. It's if you come in off of Salisbury Street, off through the main gate, you look straight ahead at La Maison, and then the road forks. Right. And if you go up the right side, you go up a hill about two thirds of the way up is Kennedy Building, where most of our courses are. The parking garage is on the uh, left side, just as you, uh, just opposite La Maison. It's a two-tiered parking garage. But that's where the gym is to the right. No, the gym is up on the right yeah, toward the top around. of the hill. There, is, there are some large lots up there too, but the main parking garage, the concrete two-tiered parking garage, is on the left as you come in on the entrance. You can actually see it from It's been a while. I mean, we always, always used to go to the college fairs there, but I thought the gym was on the right. I'm pretty sure the gym was on the right. Well, yeah. once you like go, pretty it close to the end. You go in and there are different the loops. Well, the, the, like the, the road trip. does loop around. Pink yeah. and there's, a, there's a northern entrance, I think, up by the athletic mm -hmm. fields. Oh. So you may be th thinking of coming in that way. Oh, perfect. I usually come in on Salisbury Street, mm -hmm. which is at the bottom of the hill, and you drive up. And, and you when you come right. in, basically the campus is all uphill from there. Oh, you can yeah, see the you're right. I come up, I come up through enter. past the uh, Notre Dame Academy. Yeah. Oh. What's that yeah. street? Yeah, Whatever. Yeah, if you come in yeah. from there, everything is reversed. Yeah. Right. All right. But it's across from, is it the Albanian church? It's across from that yes. church, the parking yeah. lot. Yeah. So, you can so, okay. so, you know, frankly, I don't think parking is terrible on campus, and most of the time you can find parking not too far from the classroom. But again, I've, I've, I've attended many different colleges and universities, and it's never great, <laughs> ever. And the place I went to school, they kept tearing up parking garages and building more buildings. So, you know, after a while, it was just, you know, more density and less parking. Right. But that was, that was a big campus. I went to Penn State, and so they actually did have a shuttle. <laughs> to Are get you campus. considered an assumption student? Because in years past, uh, I don't know how we got there, but they had free concerts. Yes, campus, they still they do. Pretty good. So are you yes. considered being able to go to those? Yes. Yes, that's one of the benefits, by the way. You can take advantage of all of the special events that Assumption College puts on, and um, most of them are free. In fact, they have an artist in residence who is giving a concert next week, the 16th, 17th, and 18th, in the Xotis, uh 
Family Center, which is a brand new building. It's the newest building on campus. It just opened last year. They have a beautiful new auditorium there, mm -hmm. and it's open to the public. Yeah. So I'll tell you about that. It's from 1 to 2.30, yeah. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and she is the artist in residence. She's going to be doing a special presentation of Box Goldberg Variations. Mm -hmm. So if you're interested, uh, that's all free of charge, open to the public. And of course, we publicize it through WISE, but it's an Assumption College um, event. Is the Everett EV charging station on campus? I'm sorry? A electric vehicle charging station on campus? Uh, that's a good question because I have an electric car. I don't believe they do. <laughs> there would be a good thing to, to suggest, though. And I would like to see that as well. Yeah, I mean, they pop up all over the place. Like they Mr. Do. State they does, do. it does have that. I mean, I find I can get to campus and home on one charge. But yeah, being able to plug in my car would be great. So I, have, I drive an electric car as well. Uh, but to answer, you, I think you asked a question about. Um, fee for the summer courses yeah. it's likely again we're still putting the program together it's likely we will charge for individual courses that you attend and there'll be a nominal fee and i think it's probably around 20 between 20 and 35 dollars depending upon the length of the course and so forth so that's kind of the ballpark so so it's, it's likely that we'll be charging individual fees for those classes but for our regular academic year uh, your membership allows you to take as many courses as you want. So again, uh, courses typically are not run for 90 minutes. Uh, a and B in the fall, C and D in the winter and spring. And uh, a full year membership allows you to attend all four sessions. A half year you can be either A and B or C and D. And the main reason we do that is we have a lot of members who go to Florida and other warm climates in the winter. So they don't want to have to pay full year membership when they're going to be away for half a year. So, so they'll be a fall member and then they'll come back the next fall and they're in Florida for the winter. Do you have um, locations other than the college? Yes. Yes, I'll get into that. Okay. Uh, and so typically, as I said, 15 to 20 courses each session. We've actually been adding more. Uh, so what we have in C session coming up is 18 classes. And in D session, we're going to be 22, which is more than we've ever offered. But as our membership grows, we're finding more venues and we're offering more classes. And so more choices. And again, as many classes as you want to take and what your schedule will permit, uh, you can many, do it. How many people on average will take a, a course? It depends upon the venue. Uh, some of our classrooms are 20 to 25. And then we have a cutoff. Uh, the larger classrooms typically are about 60 to 65. So that's kind of where we're at. So uh, I'd say probably two thirds of the classes are in the larger venues where 60, 65 people can attend. And we maintain a wait list so that if there's a cancellation, people get in, can get into the class if there wasn't room originally. And very popular classes, which sometimes fill up very quickly, we make every effort to repeat them, and the people who are on a wait list get first priority for getting in the class when it's repeated. Yeah, faculty? Who, who are the faculty? They're, uh, <coughs> it's a combination of, we have uh, professors who work in local colleges, such as Holy Cross and Clark and so forth, teach classes. Um, we have retired professors who teach classes, and we have other professionals who teach classes. Oh, yeah. My, uh, I, I taught courses on music, I teach courses on technology, I've taught courses on climate change, I taught courses on photography. Uh, okay. I have worked for a part of my career as a teacher and college instructor, but majority of my career I was a working engineer. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, <coughs> my background is in technology, but I also have some hobbies, and so I've taught courses on music and uh, photography, which come out of my hobbies as opposed to my uh, career. But uh, we have a whole mix of, of uh, people teaching classes. And another thing that we do, and I, I, when we get to, into the courses I have, I can show you what courses we have coming up in C and D session. Um, one of the things that we do, we, we, we always used to do evaluations of new instructors and then several years ago we decided we'll 
do evaluation for all the instructors. So all the students get an opportunity to provide feedback at the end of the class and uh, hopefully, you know, if you, if you like the class, you say, great class, loved it. And if you had criticisms or ways that course could be improved, uh, you can indicate that. And we have one of our volunteers goes through all of those evaluations and provides feedback to all of our instructors and call them group leaders because they're really more facilitators than teachers. But um, I think the quality of our courses has been getting better and better. And a lot of it is the feedback that we get from our members uh, that guarantee that we're always uh, pre presenting quality courses and improving our courses, and I think they really are. So, are, are these class classes? Like, I mean, books? Some are. Tests? Homework? They run, they run the gamut. Uh, I don't want to get too far ahead of myself, but we will. Okay. Um, the courses are not offered for credit. They are only there for the fun of learning. No tests, no college credit. Uh, no grades. Just take a course for the fun of learning on a, about a subject. Uh, some of the courses are taught on virtually as college level courses. Uh, and there's sometimes a fair amount of reading. Uh, we had one course just recently where we did um, notable biographies of people like uh, Benjamin Franklin and... Um, Ulysses S. Grant. Hmm? Grant. Uh, Grant. Uh, right. Also, uh, Anne Moody. Yeah. And uh, Robert McNamara. Mm -hmm. yeah, right. And Jimmy Pearsall. Thank you. Oh. So basically five <laughs> biographies in five weeks. Well, That's a lot of reading. <laughs> so email? Do you get assumption email? Yes. Do they use Blackboard? I mean, and do you use Blackboard? Or no? Yeah, sometimes, you know, it's up to, the, uh, every, every instructor does it how they like it. So some use Blackboard, some use PowerPoints, some just stand up there and lecture. No, you, no I mean Blackboard, the online system. Oh, well, okay. Maybe I'll, I'll, I'll talk about the email. Okay. Okay. Um, but to answer your question, so on, on one extreme, we have very academic courses, virtually college-level courses. Now, they're five weeks, 90 minutes, so it's not as long as a full semester course, but can be pretty rigorous and intense and a fair amount of reading. And then on the other extreme, we have just fun courses, you know, um, uh, science for the non-technical people, and just do fun experiments. Uh, we have a lot of music courses. And it might be uh, everything from opera to jazz to contemporary music. I'm doing a course on the Beatles uh, starting in February. Um, and there's no prep for that. You just show up and we talk about the Beatles and you see some videos of, of some of their uh, performances. And so they're just fun courses. And so we run the full gamut. Um, oh, yeah. I will say the professors who teach at WISE love teaching at WISE. And many of them teach undergraduates and they sit there like a big lump and it's hard to get them motivated. And they come in and they talk to WISE students and they're all highly educated. Um, almost all of our members are, have college degrees, many with advanced degrees, and they have a lifetime of experience. And the professors love teaching WISE students because they're so engaged and they know so much. And a lot of times they'll bring up stuff that the professor didn't know or the instructor didn't know because they have lifetime experience too. So uh, it's a very engaging kind of interaction in the classroom. Uh, there are some classes that are almost all straight lecture and other classes are a lot of interaction and a lot of discussion. It depends upon how uh, the course is structured and how the uh, group leader likes to, to do it. Uh, we did one recently, um, Hamlet, one act at a time. It's a five-act play. We did one act a week. Uh, Jim Foley was our instructor, terrific guy. And uh, it was a lot of interaction. People would read portions of the play, and we talk about, you know, what's going on with the, uh, the, the act and, and what it all means, and uh, a lot of interaction in a course like that. On your, cat on your, your course listings, how detailed are they so you know what you're getting into? There's a catalog, a course description, 
Uh, I have a, a, an outline here, but it doesn't have all the details. Mm -hmm. But you can go online and you can, or you can ask for a catalog from the office. And it's a complete detailed description of the course. And it's usually what we, we really push for is a week by week outline. Like week one, we're going to do this, week two, we're going to do that, and so forth. So it, it's pretty detailed. Uh, you were asking about email. We have an online site, and uh, about 80 85% of our members actually use it for registration. You can pay your dues and, and register for courses online. And we have email links to the full membership and to individual uh, participants in a class. So when we hand out uh, information about the course, what's going to come up this coming week, or you want copies of the handouts, uh, we email everything out. And we know everyone doesn't use email, so we always uh, you know, get hard copies to people as well. But uh, the best way is through email. And uh, we've really embraced technology the last few years, and it's been a great help, not only for disseminating information, but like if we have a snow day, it used to be like, how do we get a hold of people, 65 people in the class to let them know class is canceled due to snow? It used to take hours or get people to call into the office to see if the class is canceled. Now we can send an email out in 10 minutes and let everybody know. So it's your own email, not the school's email? We have our own. Not assumption.edu or? No, whatever. we don't use the assumption site. We have our own email server. And um, it's, it's a program called Wild Apricot, but it's, we use it to provide all kinds of information. I encourage you to go to our site. There's all kinds of information about why it's there, our courses, and our organization, and all kinds of other data. And that is? I think it should be on the brochure, yeah. And you can okay. pay dues there, and register for courses there, and uh, it's very convenient. Okay, so as I said, Courses taught a very broad range of subjects. Uh, literature, poetry, economics, history, music, philosophy, science. Uh, so what I brought here is, uh, again, this is just a summary of our courses. This is not the complete course catalog. But you can get an idea of what courses we have coming up. Um, let's see, I think she's it. Yeah, C and D. Uh, the upcoming uh, sessions and just get an idea of what courses that we are pre presenting and you can go to the site and you can see a complete description of those classes. You know, some people take classes because you know they're kind of an expert on the subject they want to learn more about it and we also encourage people to take courses kind of out of their comfort zone and say, oh, you know, I don't know anything about this subject, but I'd like to learn a little bit more about it. Well, so, I see Father Richard Lamoureux is doing one on architecture. I used to chat with him all the time about Frank Lloyd Wright because we were very into Wright. Yeah. So it's nice to see him there. That's a, that looks intriguing to me. And as I noted, um, Courses taken for learning and interest. No tests, no grades, uh, it's just the fun of learning. And there's no pressure. Um, so, um, you know, you can relax and if you, know, if you don't get to a reading assignment and you don't feel like you're totally prepared because you got busy this week and you didn't do the reading well, no big deal. Come to the class, get what you can, and uh, no accountability. You can, you know, put in as much or as little as you want, but there's no pressure. Uh, so here's where we hold our courses. Um, as I said, we're affiliated with Sumption College, and Kennedy uh, Room 119 is where we have the majority of our classes. Uh, generally, two classes, five days a week. Uh, there's a class uh, at 1 or 1.30, a Monday, Wednesday, Friday, they start at 1.30, and Tuesday, Thursday, they start at 1 o'clock, and that's basically to accommodate the Assumption College schedule, because they use the classroom in the morning. And then um, there's a second class afterwards, so like the 1 o'clock class goes to 2.30, there's a 15-minute break for people to get in and out, and then we start at 2.45, we go another four, 90 minutes to 4.15. Um, where is Bear Meadowbrook? 
Yes. Near Meadow Brook. That is um, the Audubon. Yeah, but I it's know the off of um, Miss Massasoit Road. Right. Oh, I, that, I thought that was Broad Meadow. Yes, you're right. Oh, okay. I always want to say there, but it's not your board medical. Yeah, okay. You're right. Thank now, you. Now, now I'm on. You got me. I'm now I'm on. That's the second time I've done that. <laughs> board medical. Yes. For that clarification. Thank you. And Thank you for getting that. Right. In, in the Briarwood. Um, yeah. So I know their parking is pretty limited, especially now that they're like. Um, yeah, we we know? actually are not doing courses right now at Briarwood because they're doing a major renovation. Mm -hmm. So typically we would do a course a term there. Uh, we're not doing something for spring. But we will again start up next fall. Okay, at but, so, but that isn't just what Briarwood residents then. Yeah. Well, yeah. What we do when we go to places like the Willows or Briarwood, and we've recently started going to Southgate, is residents can attend the courses for free. Uh, and one of the reasons we we go to these is first of all we have more classroom space, so we can give more courses. We a chance to get exposure of wise courses in these other communities and the residents can come and attend for free. If you're a wise member, you can go to those and attend the course as a member. So do you have to pay to utilize Southgate or Willows or They Bible give us for the fact that they're co going free, the residents are going they, free. Is right. Kind of that, that's the benefit. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So they make it available to us. Yeah. Uh, they like to have us come there. Sure. Makes and sense. they usually do a nice thing like mm -hmm. um particularly at the Willows and at Southgate, they'll put out a nice spread of coffee and pastries and stuff. Sure. Uh, Southgate's a really nice, uh, if you're not familiar nice, with it, it's a really yes, nice venue. Uh, we yes. just started doing courses there a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, they have this beautiful theater with a balcony and everything. Mm -hmm. It's really nice. It's almost like a movie theater. And uh, one of the things they don't want us to do is bring food into the theater but they put a spread out in the lobby outside the theater. And what's been happening is people show up half an hour before the class, usually starting at 10 o'clock. These, these classes, by the way, generally start at 10 in the morning. Uh, the, uh, Willows, Briarwood, and Southgate. And so people show up at 9.30 and we'll sit around in the lobby and socialize and have some pastry and it's really nice uh, get together and then 10 o'clock we go and have the class. Would you consider coming up to West Boylston? We have a new senior center being built and it has classroom space. And Absolutely. We're always looking for new, new venues. Okay. Uh, then I'll yeah. take contact information sure. for you. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, Hanover Theater, we've done a course there called Behind the Scenes. I think we've run it three times. Uh, I took it the first time we ran it. I, I did some Hanover Theater, so it was really, really a fun course. Uh, Broad Meadow Brook, thank you. Uh, that's the Audubon site at Massasoit, and we generally run an Audubon course here every session. Generally during the winter, it's an indoor thing. Uh, the other uh, sessions are outside, and um, uh, we have taken a lot of their Audubon courses. Uh, we did um, one on the, um, the Worcester um, uh, reservoir system. Uh, that was really interesting. We did one going down to Blackstone all the way down to uh, Pawtucket. Um, that was so an additional. Thing. Always a lot of lot of interesting courses. If you like to get out and just drop around, um, uh, those are always nice courses. We've recently been doing courses at Tower Hill Botanic Garden. Uh, John Trexler, who's one of the founding members of that, does this course and he talks about how the garden came together and. And generally we do like that once a year in the, in the D session in the spring. And so we're going to be offering again this year, I think. Uh, yes. We almost always have courses at the Worcester Art Museum. And we started doing more and more courses at the Jewish Community Center on Salisbury Street as well. So those are our main uh, venues. And again, the class size depends upon the venue. So. You know, 119 Kennedy will have, you know, about 60 people. Plourd holds about 22. Uh, JCC is 22 or 25, cut off. Uh, if we go to Southgate or the Willows, we can take 60 people. It is, um, oh, just lost my train of thought. Oh, hmm. It'll come oh, back. <laughs> yes. Uh, um, the day's classes are run. Is it a Monday through Friday or is it seven days a week? Monday through Friday.
typically. And again, most of the classes are 90 minutes. Sometimes the, um, like the, the Audubon classes run a little longer, particularly if we're traveling somewhere, but typically a 90 minute class. So again, once you're a member, you can register for an unlimited number of courses, uh, as many as you feel you want to take. Uh, and uh, did you want to talk to, to this? Certainly. Okay. Um, why is, is our academic is pushes towards academics, but there are many benefits to having a wise uh, membership. You will receive a um, ID card from Assumption. You go and have your picture taken, and that entitles you to a lot of benefits on the uh, Assumption campus. For example, you are able. Uh, oh, yeah, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> right. Believe it or not, if you're 70 years old, you're a student. And many, I don't know if you're going to mention No, this. go ahead. Many museums, not only in the country, but in around the world, because I've been to museums in Europe, will accept that for a reduced rate. Some museums, students get it for free, like the Clark Museum in North Adams. <laughs> uh, most, many most other museums, you get in like half price. Worcester State and the Worcester Art Museum, you know, students can go there for free. Yeah. So it's great, not only on campus, but to as, as, as museums and libraries and things like that. Right, right, good. Um, Assumption has a very lovely uh, library, so with your your ID, you're able to access the library and also, yes. Are they, they special IDs? Because Worcester State, one of the things that was really a disappointment, we got an ID card, but they wouldn't let me use the gym, the new gym. Uh -huh. the, they said, oh, you know, we're only starting, I don't know, did they ever change that? I don't know, I've never tried to use oh, the, gym, the gym. It was brand new, you know, it was one of yeah. the buildings they yeah. just did. You they can. said, oh no, you have a restricted <laughs> card. And, you know, well, the ID, well, the ID is free. And it's not restricted in any way. The only, the only issue people run into with the ID sometimes is because the, uh, you have to go to the uh, police station on campus to get the ID. Mm -hmm. And they get very busy at the beginning of terms with students and so forth. So they ask wise members to kind of wait a while. Oh, yeah. So just scheduling it in sometimes. But, but once you have it, I mean, it's, it's good forever. Okay. And, um, the use of the athletic facilities is not free. You get a reduced rate as a member. That's, that's one of the things you have to pay for. And the dining hall is like half price. They have um, Taylor Dining Hall. And, um, and it's, a, it's basically one fee, and you go in and then you take as much food as you want. Really? It's uh, like a decline, like a college? Yeah, and it's like a dollar. Uh, it's like six six, six and a quarter now. Six, or six thirty. Six dollars and thirty cents. And all you can eat. You pay one flat fee, and then you go in and take as much food as you want. Yeah. And um, they have Charlie's as well, which is mm -hmm. a and Charlie's mm -hmm. as well, uh, drop which is a snack bar yes. campus. Right, and of course you pay for what you get there. But mm -hmm. uh, wise members are often seen in the dining hall before classes. It's a it's a great meeting place and. The food is very good. Mm -hmm. We enjoy it, and, and it's very nice uh, interacting with the students and the the uh, different staff members of the college when you go there. Uh, you also, with your membership, have uh, access to different sporting events at Assumption. You get a reduced uh, entry fee with that with your ID, and. You can go to various theater performances that they have. Uh, recently, there was the uh, Limber Limburg Cathedral Boys Choir of Germany, which gave a show which I understand was wonderful. So, and there are various human arts uh, presentations that they do that we are invited to attend. What we do ha offer um, as a benefit to WISE is usually monthly or, or every two months, there's a brown bag lecture, which is a, a lecture program. Uh, we've had people like Jim Weilu from the retired um, director of the Worcester Art Museum come and speak about 
uh, some of the works of art that there are there at the museum. Uh, we've had Diane Williamson. Um, it's a, also Steve Kirchian, am I pronouncing it? Kirchian. Kirchian from the Boston uh, Globe, the Spotlight team. He came to one of the performance that was put on by Wise, and he lectured about, uh, I believe it was about the uh, Gardener, the theft at the Isabel Stewart oh, Garden. Garden. He wrote the book on it. Oh, I, I heard it. And yes, of that is, actually yeah. was one of the special lectures we yeah. did for our 25th anniversary. But um, he came and spoke to that us. Was very very well attended. Yeah. Wonderful, wonderful yeah. lecture. Yeah. About the book and the theft at the museum yeah. and so forth. Right. And that was all part of the WISE program. Uh, there are social events uh, that we put on. There are usually holiday luncheons. Um, always fun. You get together. I think our last one was 90 to 100 people, mm -hmm. wasn't yeah. it, at Val's yeah, we, restaurant? Of course, day. that you pay for individually, but it's still a very nice event. Yeah, we do a holiday luncheon in December, and then we have an annual meeting in mm -hmm. the spring. Right. Uh, last year at Val's in uh, Holden. Right, so it's very nice. Um, also, we, at, I think it was last year, had a speaker from the Worcester Historical Society at a restaurant, Leo's, I think, yes. for and he lectured on the diners of if Worcester and Worcester County uh -huh. was a, a great lecture and something different yeah. and interesting, which that's something you pay for individually, but um, certainly something that you might not often see offered anywhere else. There is a um, book club, which has, I think, about 50 members at this point. And it, it's a book discussion group, and you read a book and you discuss. It could be a uh, classic or it may be something current, something interesting. Usually um, members are able to make suggestions, and so it's a, an opportunity to read something that you've been wanting to uh, read and, and listen to other people discuss it and get another point of view. There is also a movie club, which is lots of fun. We go to the uh, Cinema North f frequently, and also Kennedy uh, 119, they show movies there. They are at no expense, but the uh, Worcester Cinema, uh, we have to pay for that. But we're very lucky to have Jeff Long as an instructor in the program, and he happens to be the cr movie critic for the TNG. And he'll often attend these movies, and there's a little discussion group afterwards, and you talk about the movie, and, oh, I liked it, I didn't like it, you know, the whole thing. But uh, it's a very nice addition to the program. There's a baseball... Uh, I, was, I would oh. say, well, my, my wife, Bobby, is one yes. who organized the movie club, working with Jeff Long. Yes. I think we have over 200 people on the email list oh, now. Is that many? Oh and my gosh. we typically will do a, a couple of movies a month, mm -hmm. you know, based on availability of classrooms or what's showing at the movie theater. But I, I, I keep track of how many movies we've seen. A lot. And over the, uh, I think it's over 60 films now mm -hmm. in the two, two and a half years that the club has been mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. So it's usually, you know, thoughtful, interesting films which we'll go to view and then talk about afterwards. Then we get together and have a discussion for about half an hour about the movie. Yeah. And if Jeff's there, he'll lead the discussion or someone else will. And yes. That's kind of a fun event. It is, very, very much so. And for the sports lovers, we have a baseball club. Joe was instrumental in starting that up, I believe. We go to the Worcester the, Bravehearts. Uh, yeah, well, you know, it's funny how that started. <clears throat> uh, we have someone who coordinates our special events activities and I was sitting in a council meeting one day, and uh, the person who's, I won't ever mention her name, but the person who coordinates the special event, someone came up to her and says, why don't we get the, a, a group together and go to a baseball game and the Worcester Bravehearts play over at, at uh, Holy Cross, and that could be a fun outing. And she says, oh, I don't think anybody's interested in that. I said, excuse me. I said, I've done that. And, and a lot of times when I was working, uh, the company would get together and we'd have an outing and we'd go to a baseball game. It was a lot of fun. So I said, well, if you want to do it, you can do it. I said, okay, I will. Okay. So I did. So okay. we've, this now become kind of a regular thing. Yeah. And what's even neater, I don't know if you know about the Bravehearts. They're mm -hmm. kind of a college team, college, college players that played at a league during the summer uh, for about six or eight weeks. Uh, and uh, they play at Fitton Field at Holy Cross. But, of course, the Pawtucket team 
is moving to Worcester, yeah. and they're going to be a AAA farm team for the Red Sox, and that's going to be terrific. So we're already thinking about what we're going to do, and they already uh, have some uh, work that they're coordinating with Assumption College. In fact, when they announced that they were coming to Worcester, mm -hmm. there was a whole big thing at Assumption College. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have a tie in that way as well. So we're definitely going to be doing things with the uh, the Pawtucket team when they move here. Yeah. Uh, become the the Paw Sox, now yeah. the Wool Sox, or the Sox, whatever they are. Sox, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, you know that Braveheart. <coughs> those teams, they play good ball. They, they do. Play very. I, we've gone to some of the the Cape League, and they really play good ball. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, really talented ball players. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So they're a lot of fun, and you know, like when we go to uh, the games, I mean, tickets are very reasonable. I think you know, box seats are like eight dollars, yeah. and you know, you know, getting a hot dog and a beer and stuff doesn't break the bank and things <laughs> yeah. like that. So it's really a fun outing. You see some great games, yeah. and um, so that's something that we always schedule during the summer now. We also have a travel group. Uh, we do day trips occasionally, uh, which are very well attended. Uh, we've gone to places like the New Britain Museum of American Art uh, and had lunch at the German restaurant down the street, which was a lot of fun. Uh, there is the uh, Harvard Art Museum we've attended. We've gone to Quabbin Reservoir for the day. We've also uh, got a group that does travel weekly. The group travel, is it through, who is it through? Um, well, we use Colette and Colette. some other travel agencies. I right. think recently took a trip, visited four cities in Canada recently. Right. Went mm -hmm. to Quebec and Montreal and Ottawa and Toronto oh. last summer. Road Scholar sometimes yes. helps us. This is a, an upcoming trip. Uh, the best of theater in New York behind the Velvet Curtain. I believe this is a four day, three or I four think so. Day? It's going to be in the fall. Right, coming up and something different. Um, and there is the trip to Canyon Country. Uh, is that still on? Yeah. I think. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, yes. Are all your trips, um, you know, uh, on a bus, like even the local ones, or do you carpool? Oh, um, they're usually on a bus. Yeah, it depends. I think the the Canada trip, the flew to Quebec City, and then they took a bus to the other cities and ended up in Toronto and then flew home. So, okay. it's you know it depends upon how far you're going, but right. typically on a bus. Um, I was just think about um, something else we travel, but I don't know. Okay. Okay. Well, um, let's see. So that is something that you, you know, if you care to do, you may, and it is uh, at your expense, but a lot of good trips there. We have also a wise what publications that come out. We are on Facebook. So if you're looking for information on all these different uh, activities, you can find it there on Facebook with pictures. <laughs> and um, we also have technology help sessions, usually before the sign up for the registration. Uh, one of our members is very good computer literate uh, and he helps everyone navigate that system. We also have discussion groups occasionally on the Supreme Court and we've got some very good discussions going currently with uh, what's going on with the Supreme Court and um, law. And I believe in the C&D sessions, there's one course being offered by this instructor who happens to be a lawyer on um, the limits and uh, of the presidential power. And then Roe v. Wade is in D session. So very current topics, things that, that you would like, want to learn something about. Yeah, I would just add yes. to that. Uh, Jack Ross is our instructor. He's, he's a lawyer by trade, and he's been doing these Supreme Court courses uh, one every session for the last several years. And so he and I kind of put together this discussion group because there were a lot of people who just wanted to talk about recent court cases, the whole thing with the Kavanaugh nomination and everything else. Mm -hmm. So that's been a very popular thing. In fact, we're meeting again next week. We typically meet about once a month. And we just get a bunch of people together into a classroom, 
20, 30, 40 people, whoever want to show up. And we just talk about recent cases and mm -hmm. ramifications and, and so forth. So, and that's you know, no added expense. That's just, so just you know, very informal, membership. but anybody wants to come up and talk about it, uh, we have this, this group that gets together about once a month. Right. So you can see there are lots of benefits to the WISE membership. You can do as much or as little as you like, but it certainly is something that it's a very a wonderful way of socializing with other people, meeting other people, and yes. <coughs> Sorry to interrupt your train of thought. Mm -hmm. Just um, wondering, if you pay for, let us say, half a year, mm -hmm. yeah. does your involvement yes. um, entitle you to just that? No, you can, you can attend year? all of these other events if you're no, a group. I mean that particular part of year. Yes. So okay. if you pay for, let us say, the CD um, sessions. Yeah, if you're, if you're a member, said. even if you're just a half year member, if you want to take part in the special events or the trips or anything, you're welcome to do so. But I mean, it has to be that particular session. No. So no. If like you if you're, for example, if you're uh, a half year member and you didn't become a member in C and D because you're going to go to Florida for a while, but you come back in the spring, and um, you come back in the spring, and you want to take part in a special event or anything, perfectly fine. Good, good, good. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. The the only restriction with the half year membership is the ability to take the courses yeah. the other the other two semesters. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if you're an A B member, you can't sign up for C and D courses or mm -hmm. vice versa. But all of these other events uh, you can participate in. Mm -hmm. okay. No restriction. Great. Okay. Okay, I think, I think we touched on everything. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, Thank you. Well, when does the next C, C session start? Uh, the first week in February, I think it's February 4th. That's a Monday. That's the first day of class. It's 4th. Oh, okay. And uh, as I mentioned, member directed organization. Uh, we have a paid director. Uh, we have a president. This is my term was over this past June. We have a vice president, treasury, and secretary. Uh, and a bunch of committees. The executive committee is kind of the oversight committee to keep the organization humming along. The curriculum, don't do that. There we go. Uh, the curriculum committee is kind of a key committee in the sense that the main function of WISE is the courses we do. And so the curriculum committee is very active in setting up the program and the courses and identifying the group leaders. Strategic planning for our long range planning goals, the special events, which these brown bag lunches and, and some of these uh, other events. Communications, uh, maintain a Facebook page and a photo archive and get newsletters out to the membership. Uh, the outreach, which helps to get the word out about WISE to the rest of the uh, community. A finance committee, uh, which makes sure that we stay fiscally sound and we do smart stuff with the money we have. Um, most of the income we have is from our membership dues, so uh, that's the great bulk of it. Uh, essentially, we run all our programs off of that. What do you uh, do with your millions of dollars? I'm sorry? A million? <laughs> what uh, do you do with your money? <laughs> great. That, that's pretty good. Well, you know, our, our major expenses are our paid staff and the honorariums we give our group leaders. And uh, we give something back to Assumption College for the ability to use the facilities there. Uh, the NHR is a very nominal fee mm -hmm. given the use of the classroom and all the other facilities yeah. on campus. So that's basically um, how the organization solid. runs. Mm -hmm. uh, again, a nominating committee uh, for filling in these. Uh, here we go. Uh, a nominating committee that fills in these, these uh, executive slots. Uh, and uh, a travel committee that, like the trip to Canada and the one coming up to New York, uh, arranges for those. So we're always looking for volunteers, and in addition to that, uh, and filling in all, of, filling out all of these committees, um, uh, we have volunteers that uh, work with the group leaders in every course. Uh, my wife actually uh, coordinates the class assistants, and so one of the members who's in each class 
um, works with the instructor, helps to disseminate information, takes attendance, coordinates collecting the uh, course evaluations and all of that. So uh, that's a great way also for people to start volunteering and get involved with the organization has become a class system. Simple job, but really a vital one. I guess that's it. Great. Well, thank you so thank much. You. Thank you. That was very Appreciate interesting. Appreciate it. Well, thank you for coming. Very nice. So, I said, I, you know, um, if you have any questions, uh, don't hesitate to ask or get in touch with me. In fact, I would give you my email address if you want to write it down. Um, would you good. give me your contact information sure. for COA director? Who's it for? Her name is Lisa Vicklin. Oh, oh, She's yes. Just, um, did you, did you write it down here, or yeah, no? just, you can write it down. Um, okay. If you want to, um, let me. Lisa Bicklin. Yeah. If you want to, let me know how to, you know.